Today, I want to share with you a visualized explanation of the merge sort algorithm. This algorithm has a classic recursive implementation. The time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n log n. The space complexity is big O of n. This is also a perfect example to showcase how recursions actually work. Here we are given an unsorted array and we want to be able to sort it. The key idea behind merge sort is actually the following. If we have two sorted arrays, it's easy to merge them into one bigger sorted array. This merging step can be done efficiently by having two pointers, each pointing at the beginning of one subarray. And then we can compare the value of the two pointers. The smaller one gets copied into a temporary array, and the corresponding pointer moves forward by one. Keep doing that until one of the pointers reaches the end of the array. At this point, copy over the remaining of the other array. Now we are done with the merging step. Think about this. The merging step would make sense only if we can have the two subarrays sorted, right? But how are we going to do that? This is where the recursion part kicks in. Now let's formally define the merge sort algorithm. This algorithm takes in three arguments. The first argument, array, always refers to the whole array. The second argument, s, is their starting index. And the third argument, e, is the end index. The arguments s and e specifies a half-open interval, including the s and excluding the e. For example, if we let s equal 0 and e equal 16, this actually defines the whole array as we see in the picture. Now, inside of the algorithm, if the interval has no more than one element, then we don't need to do anything, just return. If the interval has more than one element, then we find the middle point between S and E and break it down to two separate intervals. The next step is to recursively call the same merge sort function on the two smaller intervals. And after that, if the merge algorithm works as expected, we should have the two subarrays defined by the interval s to m and m to e both sorted. Then we call the merge algorithm to merge these two sorted subarrays into one bigger sorted subarray. Now we have explained the recursive definition of the merge sort algorithm, which is simple and magical. But when a computer executes this recursive function, how does it actually work? Now let's try to sort this array with this merge sort algorithm. In the bottom half of the screen, we simulate the call stack of the computer program. This is where a computer program stores all the active functions. And it is crucial to understanding how recursions work. Let's start with this example. This array has 16 elements, so we're going to call this function with s equals 0 and e equals 16. When the merge sort function is called, a corresponding instance is pushed into the call stack. The highlighted positions indicate which array is being sorted. Then let's execute the function. In line 2, we check the size of the array, which is greater than 1. Then we move to line 4. The mid index is 8 in this case. So we move on to line 5, where we call the merge sort again on the array of 0 to 8. Then the function call is pushed into the call stack. At this moment, we see that the call stack has more than one function call. In this case, it always works on the function call that is pushed in the latest. We now work on the function call from index 0 to index 8. In line 2, we check that the size of the array is greater than 1. Then we move on to line 4, where the midpoint is 4 now in this time. And then we move on to line 5 to call the merge sort again from index 0 to 4. Then the merge sort function again is pushed into the call stack. We now have three functions in the call stack. This pattern continues as long as the array size is greater than 1. We end up with another two function calls on the stack, 
from index 0 to 2 and from index 0 to 1. We then execute the merge sort function call over index from 0 to 1. In this one, we have an array size equal 1. The function returns in line 3. When the function returns, the corresponding instance in the call stack pops. Now in the call stack, we have four functions. As we continue to execute the program, we work on the latest function call in the call stack, which is a merge sort over index 0 to 2. So remember previously we executed in line 5 already, so we're gonna move on to line 6 at this time, which is to call merge sort over index 1 to 2. The merge sort over index 1 to 2 is then pushed onto the stack. This one will also return early, as the size of the array is 1. Then it's popped from the call stack again. Then the call stack is again having four function calls inside. We then continue to execute the function call over index 0 to 2. And this time we move on to executing line 7. Then the merge function is pushed onto the call stack. As we continue to execute, the program works on the merge function. Once it finishes, the function call is popped from the call stack. Now I'll stop talking and let the rest of the algorithm play. Now the array is completely sorted. In the execution of the algorithm, the maximum depth in the call stack is about log n, where n is the size of the array. This is because each of the merge sort function call is over the array that is half of the size of the previous array. This means at most log n of the merge sort function calls can show up in the call stack at the same time. This is an important concept because your computer has a maximum number of recursive function calls supported. If your call stack depth exceeds that number, you will get a stack overflow error. Now let's look at the time complexity of the merge sort algorithm. We know that it is a big O of n log n in the worst case. And here is a hand wavy proof to it. Let's choose any element in this array and look at how many times it's processed in the algorithm. The element is processed only if there is a function call over an interval containing this element. We see that the merge sort is called over the whole array, which is the first time, then an array with eight elements, which is the second time, the array of size four, third time, array of size two, fourth time, an array of size 1, fifth time. Each time the array size reduced by half, and this means there can be at most log n many such function calls. This not only applies to the merge sort function, but also the merge function for similar reasons, which is also called log n times. So in total, for each element, there are big O of log n many times this element is processed. Given that we have n elements in total, we get the complexity being big O of n times log n. In terms of the space complexity, in the merge function, we require actual space that's equal to the size of the array, which is big O of n. This is the end of today's episode on merge sort. If you'd like to see more videos just like this one, 
please subscribe and ring the bell. I'll see you next time.